Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome. It is 5.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and my apologies because I had to, I hate not being on time, so my deepest apologies, however, going to be well worth it because at the end of the update tonight, in the next 45, 50 minutes or so, you're going to see video that nobody else in the world has, and it was sent to me, but it's for all of you as well, so you, you do not want to miss it. Um, incredible. Incredible. Just you're going to be there and see it. So it was well worth the five minutes extra for me to get in. Um, tonight, the title of the program is The Rapidly Changing War in Ukraine. And that is what we are experiencing because that's what war is. It goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And tonight we're going to talk about that back and forth. Additionally, we're going to talk about Chasiv Yar today. Been a very, very full day. Prof Gertis and I were doing some work. We created a video. You guys will be seeing that tonight on his channel, and I'll probably upload it on mine as well. Um, we did some in-depth analysis of the map for him and talked about the armored vehicle project. Really good video, so make sure you see that. Additionally, I want to throw a shout-out for Rick the Ukrainian. I will be on with him Sunday, and we will be raffling our first flag, and then we'll... Learn how to do that from Rick, who's a master, and then I'll be adding that in next week, maybe one or two days, um, to help finish, cap out um, the armored vehicle project, which is going well, um, very well. In fact, today we received final approval for the transfer of the vehicles. Done deal. All the legal work. In fact, Jania today was meeting with the... Um, Customs Bureau in Ukraine. So it's it's all done. It's all perfect. And that's where we're at. So let's get going here. Thank you, as always, for being here. Thank you for continuing to share, to like, to comment, to subscribe. Big shout out to all the new viewers. I've seen you guys in there saying, um, hello, I'm from here. I'm from there. New viewer. I think I saw a Minnesota, a Massachusetts uh, different parts of the world. So thank you guys very much. There's Arizona, USA. Michelle Marr just happened to look up the chat and see that there. Um, before we get going anywhere, let me say this, and then I'm going to introduce the patch of the night. Papa Dutch, thank you for the $10 super chat. Somebody once asked um, somebody on the road, what do I owe you? And they said, what we owe each other, just pass it on when someone else needs help. I was that guy. Man, Privet Sim. Um He's something, man. Prefit Sim. Uh, Papa Dutch, you are something, buddy. Uh, Camila Matson uh, with the SEK. -E I've got to memorize all these like Johnny Pierce has to memorize. I just memorized your locations, uh, Camila. So thank you for that. And guys, here we go. This is going to be something special tonight. So the patch of the night tonight, we're going to drop up on the microphone, is on purpose. Cats, cats, you got it for two quid. Uh, bam. Let me get it all here. This, guys. Mm. There you go. You can even hear it when I attach it there. This is an air defense unit that I received this patch from. This is a group that you guys have been helping through us. Look at this patch. And I'm using that one tonight because Ukraine is in extreme need of air defense. Extreme need not only of the F-16s to get there, and as we've said, and we will continue to say, and it's even being said more by military strategists and politicians and Ukrainians, you know, the, the F-16s are not going to be uh, a win for Ukraine. It's not going to be a panacea. It's gonna, not going to be a, a magic button that's pushed that automatically swings the uh, war into Ukraine's favor, but it's going to be a huge help in air defense and especially holding the lines, giving some back pressure where uh, they can protect against the airplanes coming up close from the Russian side and additionally the new, the new horrible um, glide bombs that are being dropped and it's really bad, guys. So that's where we're at. This is a air defense unit that we help down south and um, you do that. So thank you, thank you guys as always. So tonight we're going to talk about the good first and we're going to look at my buddy there. That's that's the smiling part. You guys are going to be seeing that uh, in a little bit. That was a preview. 
Ukraine is finally, as we've been talking about, getting their fortifications in process and doing it right. Um, if we look here, when I'm going to leave the map just like this today, <laughs> I'm not telling you anything. Uh, Zelensky in his evening address said it himself where he was today. He was up in Chernigiv in this area. Um, so it's big area. But Ukraine, I'm just going to draw the line for you guys, literally. And I have rode all of these many, many times. Do you see the blue line there? That is the fortifications that Ukraine is building and has built. And we're not talking about just a... 30 centimeter trench. We're talking about mega fortifications, mega, mega, mega. Um, and now I know the concern, the concern right off. And listen, I know I'm really zoomed out on this map, but this is, this would be shockingly accurate as to where they're located. Um, there are even second lines back here. And there are some little lines here. It's public information. But this is the fortifications going in. And yes, some of these are this way and this way. Up to 50 or 70 kilometers away from the zero line. And I know instantly we want to begin to think, oh my goodness. No, do not think that way. Finally, somebody's using their brain. And this is vitally important because if these fortifications were not being put into place, we are expecting a Russian offensive to begin maybe as early as mid-May, early June. And it's coming, guys. I'm telling you, it's coming. This is the reason that all the energy plants, and we'll be talking about that, are being hit it's why Kharkiv is under massive assault, and we will get into all of that. So this is actually good news that Ukraine, under the leadership of Sirsky, is finally taking their defensive positions serious. In fact, there's some school of thoughts for some Ukrainian leaders where they want to actually, in some places, go ahead and pull back to some of these defensive positions. And I know we do not want to use the word retreat, but... Pull back, and uh, as we say here, the American football, you know, back up and punt. And in some places, it can save a lot more lives and give time for the supply to come. Yes, Ukraine would give up some land, but they're going to give up some land regardless. It's just imminent. They're going to give up some land regardless. So are we better to give up some land and save our guys or give up some land and lose our guys. So we shall see, but these things are coming. So these are the fortification lines that are in place. And Zelensky there today, actually in Chernigiv. I, ha I was asked by somebody, what actually are those things? So they're called dragon's teeth. And typically what Ukraine is doing now is putting them in, in a line of three, and they're staggering them about 10 meters apart. They're anti-tank. Um, to slow down any assaults. And I was even asked, okay, what are they? Um, they are actually huge. I mean, it may look small there, but they're not small guys. They are big um, concrete pyramids. So it's, it's, it's like a triangle pyramid, large concrete, and they're loaded up on these trucks. They come and they drop them off with basically little cranes on the back of trucks and just kilometer after kilometer after kilometer after kilometer. Um, so now I want you also to see, I've got this video here. This is B-roll that I'm sure is being used on Ukrainian news today. I see Rick Ukrainian here. Probably um, he could see it in the news tonight there in Kiev, but this is B-roll. So there's no music. There's no talking. So just look at it. I may speak over it. These are the fortifications that are now being built, and this is the way it should be done. And now 
two years into the war, it's being done properly. This is Chernigiv direction. President Zelensky. Look at the wood, um, the wall reinforcements. Look how far into the ground. Look at the concrete barriers. This is the way it's supposed to be, and it was not this way, but now it is. President Zelensky there in the Chernigiv region. So very, very interesting. Um, yeah, Rick, I I agree with your guess. They're not going to give up 50 and 70, but they these positions are 50 to 70. Um, in fact, think about this logically, guys. Are you ready for this? Um, and Rick would know. He's there in Ukraine. Uh, let me pull that down. Let me go back to this for a second, and then let's go back to this, and let's go to this one. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's like Jania was discussing with you guys yesterday and the video with Jania yesterday was off the hook. If you're here tonight and you are new, please go back to last night's five o'clock video. Jania laid it out there, guys, talking about the front lines, explaining it to the world. And believe me, if anybody knows, he knows he works with the military 24, seven, 365, um, so he was even talking about, guys, you have to understand this is a front line, the black line here. It, this is the Russian border, and it's full of soldiers. It's full of artillery. And these defensive lines going in here, 50 kilometers from the border and 50 kilometers from the front lines here, um, <laughs> they're not putting them in for no reason. This is massive expense. And it's better to be prepared. Unfortunately, and I'll do a quick technical analysis on this, but right down here in the toughest areas, this is Kramatorsk, and we're going to look at Chasi Vyar here in a minute. Let me pull this map over for you guys like this. When you deal with Pokrovsk here and then the city of Zaporizhia, and this is the city of Dnipro, and this is Pavlograd. This is the river. This is Nikopol, which is shelled 24-7. The X here is Zaporizhia Nuclear Power Plant. I'm going to change the color now. It doesn't matter what color I go. I just go blue. And this entire place here, and I'm going to go all the way over like that. This entire block of land here, which is massive. There's no cover. Yes, there are some small villages and towns. Yes, there is some undulation in the terrain, but in general, the, the ground slopes down basically from Pavlograd, Dnipro, down toward the Dnipro Basin and down toward the Sea of Azov and the Black Sea, ultimately in the Krim. It is all going down towards sea level. Right there, there's no big urban areas unless you're Zaporizhia and Dnipro and Pavlograd and Pokrovsk is a, a medium-sized little city there. Other than that, it's farmland. It's mining and there's no cover. This is why Ukraine had to put these lines back here. Additionally, they can't go in and build lines up here because exactly what Rick said, it's nonstop smashing from the drones. Nonstop. So Ukraine is doing a good job. Do not, uh, do not think that's a negative. It's actually a positive. They're, they're, they're planning well here, and 
guys are, are happy about it, to be quite honest. All right, number two, you guys, I'm sure, are aware. You've seen it on other guys giving the updates on YouTube earlier in the day. But at the Morozovsk Air Base, um, most likely the right numbers are six destroyed airplanes, eight damaged, some soldiers lost, possibly some pilots. And this is on the Russian Air Base. I will show you where it's located. Um the latest news I saw just a few minutes ago said um, it's possible that it was only five destroyed. So we're early in the stages even yet, but regardless, some planes have been destroyed and um, some planes have been damaged and some personnel has been lost. Now, I want to show you guys because you may not know where that's at. I will show you right now. Uh, let's do this really quick. This is the Ukrainian Russian border right there, and it's right here. So, directly east, basically, of Lugansk and Donetsk. This is where that air base was, and um, this is good news. So, we've, we've got multiple good news today. Fortifications for me is great news, to be quite honest. And, of course, us being able to take out airplanes that are dropping glide bombs onto Ukraine every day is vitally important. And there's Jenya right there saying, hello, we've got a heart, handshake, UA, handshake, world, coming in from Jenya. He's in here. And, Jenya, I was just telling them, I know you're just joining, you've been busy all day. Jenya and I were just talking. Um I told people to go back and to watch the video from last night. We've got new people in here tonight if uh, they really want some good analysis on what the front line means. You were laying it out there last night. So thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, Andre Santos, I'm trying to read the chat, guys. Can you update us on the uh, movements in Belgorod? So the question is, um, you're talking about the Russian freedom battalions that were going across the border into um, Belgorod region fighting. They're still there working, but it's... it's um, <laughs> Okay, my opinion. It's good. They're making some inroads into Russia. But in my opinion, there's really no net gain from it. And I know, you know, we're okay to have differences of opinion on that, but it's no different than a year ago, guys, when the, the Freedom Battalions crossed out of Donetsk region and started trying to get in the Russia and work over toward Rostov on Don. Um, it's good. It's nice for headlines. It's nice for, for news. It's nice for rallying. It's nice for all of that. But guys, please hear me. There's not a snowball's chance in Hades that two or three battalions are getting to Moscow. And well, it's good for the morale. Well, it is good for the morale. But man, we sh in my opinion, they sure could use those guys in Chasivyar right now, and they sure could use those guys uh, west of Avdivka right now and stop running around inside Belgorod like you're really going to make a change. That's my opinion. So it it's – there you go, Rick giving – nope, they're not there anymore. They keep smashing Belgorod to Oblast, but they went out. So there you have it. I, I don't even follow it, to be honest, because it aggravates me personally. It, it aggravates me. Because I just think it's ignorant. It's absolutely ignorant. What's better? What's better is this. Send some guys behind the line. Take out six airplanes that are killing people every day. And take your drones and take out refineries. But don't run around with your flag posting it on the edge of some village like you really took that village over. But you never took it over. It's, it's, it's no different than the crap the Chechens were doing. Sorry, Rick, but it's no different than the crap the Chechens were doing, running around like they're TikTok warriors doing something special. That's just all it is. Sorry. It doesn't help the Ukrainians that are getting killed right now in Chasiv Yar, and they're dying right now. I just talked to Pete. Bad, bad, bad. 
Bad, bad. So, sorry. Uh, that's a dead story. All right. Chasivyar. Speaking of Chasivyar. Speaking of Chasivyar. I've talked to Pete today. And, um... Oda Lucas, well, I'll be. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Uh, that's cool. I'm sitting in the Boston airport where I met Greg about two years ago. Real cool dude. Well, you know what? The same back at you, my friend. I met you in the Boston airport. I was heading to Ukraine. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's cool, man. That's cool. John Larkin just heard a Johnny Pierce rant from Greg. Yeah, Johnny's wearing off on me. I'm sorry, guys. It's good, but it's, you know, I'm I'm tired of the TikTok war. I'm tired of influencers trying to make, I'm going to show you something about Elon Musk in a few minutes. It's just stupid. We have people dying every day. And I'm going to show you some of that emotion in just a moment. And sometimes we just lose the human factor out of this war. So let's talk about Chasif Yar for a moment. Let's talk about Chasif Yar. Um, I'm going to show you guys something very interesting. Chasif Yar, they are debating over, and I'll go into the map here first, and um, then I'll come back. Let's do this. And um, let's do this. Chasif Yar. So the debates are ignorant. Um, here's Ivanivsky. Okay, according, according to Institute for the Study of War, which I personally feel out of analyzing all of these guys it's the most accurate i i just i believe it's the most accurate and they say ivanovsky's completely fallen i agree with that with other things that we've seen now russia is gaining some high ground here and then they want to push up this way the road here goes this way and then out of trasivyar into um Konstantinivka. Now I'm going to show you guys something that is going to enlighten you to the amount of destruction going on. So Chasivyar is divided. It has a lake there and it connects to Mikolaevka here in Poldilsky and Shervone on the way into Konstantinivka. Chasivyar is right here. It's a fairly large town, 11, 12,000 pre-war. This is Chasiv Yar. Chasiv Yar has two sections to it. And then you have a river that goes down. And then you have the eastern section. So everybody's talking about how Russia is making access into the eastern portion of Chasiv Yar. They are bumping into the eastern section right there across the river. I've spoken with people who are here and it is not only that i'm going to show you some video now pete told us everybody publicly three four weeks ago that eventually chasiv yar will look just like bakhmut in fact much of eastern chasiv yar is already looking like bakhmut so this section here now we're going to do a little bit of analysis together, and I'm going to try to validate that for you right now. I'm going to zoom in on a satellite, and I'm going to show you a church. And then I'm going to show you video from the 98th Brigade, 98th Airborne. But it's not the 98th of... Ukraine, it's the 98th from Russia, and I'm going to show you this. So let's do this first. We come in, Bakhmut, Ivavnivsky, 
and Cha Sivyar. There we have it. This is Ivanivsky. This is Bakhmut. Of course, the push this way for Konstantinivka. Now, everybody, zoom in with me here. And uh, unfortunately, I can't do any street level here, but you're going to know it because I'm going to try and prove it to you. So this is Kram. This is a church. If you look closely here, you see a pointed gold steeple and a second pointed gold steeple. It's, if I come out here, it's even a little clearer to see. Gold steeple, gold steeple. Additionally, I want you to, um, in fact, let me do it this way. Let me pull up Google Earth. This is now Google Earth. And look at this angle here. You see gold steeple here, pointed. Gold steeple here on this square concrete pad. Now, looking this direction, straight up the screen, you see this building here. You see basically farming, little fields, comes up a straight line, turns left, and you see this building here. Okay? Everybody got it? Additionally, I just want you to see the block buildings, nine-story, five stories, all of these residences in eastern Chasivyar. Everybody's got that now. Now I'm going to show you this with no volume. Um, it's just footage. And with all the knowledge I've given you, satellite-wise, imagery-wise, the church with the two golden steeples, the straight line, the hook, and the building, take a look at what's going on here. There's the steeple. See it? The two steeples look down the straight line and then the one building standing there. This is Chasivyar. Eastern. Eastern. Now, you tell me what you think's going on. The, the, the church is destroyed. Look. Every building is being destroyed. So I'm going to teach you something else here. Um, that's their little advertisement. I know Rick's spitting mad right now, but okay, let's stop right there. Okay, guys, this is the greatest angle. This is coming from a Russian drone. You are seeing the church building. Look at the block buildings in the four screen uh, to your left. You can see they're all destroyed, then straight up to the church, and then the blocks of buildings, and then the one building standing over to the left before the green field in the middle of your screen. Everybody got it? Okay, now if I go back to Google Earth, and I'll come back to the video in a second. Do you see this? This is the angle you're looking at. This is all these buildings. That's the church and the one building. Right there is the one building standing. And then behind that, you see the green field, the forest, and then you see Chasivyar proper. You see the power plant in the distance right here with the smokestacks right here. This is what you're looking at in the distance. And then you look going up the hill, and you're going straight toward Konstantinivka. This is what you're looking at. This is how close these places are. I'll go back to the video now. So right there, guys, you're seeing the foreground, then Chasivyar, the power plant, the other side of Chasivyar, and then up on that next hill in the background, on the higher ground, that's Konstantinivka. I mean, you can see it just perfectly. 
This is the level of destruction. And they will just continue. Why do I take 10 minutes to look the destruction? There's nobody there. They're just leveling it. Why do I take, you know, 10 minutes to break that down for you? Because I, I think it's very important that the world knows and understands what's really happening. Um, it's, 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 it's terrible. And we just let it happen. We don't. We're doing the best we can to help. But that's Joseph Yar, guys. That's Joseph Yar. Another f- worrisome stat. 30,000. You see the number there, 30K and 24 in parentheses. Um, Mad Mullet, I would love, thank you, to show that to the U.S. Congress on a loop. Um, Gail Roberts sickening destruction for destruction's sake. (laughs) Mitch Ashdown, we elected these fools. We do need to own that. Agreed. Um, Let's just pause a moment. Let's just pause a moment. All of, all of us streamers that are working together, and I know Rick's in the chat tonight, and um, Dr. Gertis and I did a video collaboration a couple of hours ago, and Johnny, Andrew Mercado, Shills, I'll be on with, with, with Dickie tomorrow night, um, Starsky, and, and why Ukraine? James there in Ukraine. Um and the you know the list goes on people that are really supporting ukraine and working together you know maybe i shouldn't leave that video yet maybe maybe let me get to that angle i have a question for you how many lives have been destroyed The center above where they have their logo there called um, the 98th. You see the 98. Um, you guys do realize that basically every building there is leveled. And that's what they're doing. They'll, it'll, it'll eventually all be leveled to the ground. So the questions I have, and maybe we just need to pause here. How many lives have been affected just in that little block? And that little block is, you know, a kilometer by a kilometer, maybe more. How many people have been killed? How many soldiers have lost their lives? How many families have been wrecked for generations? Now, what I remind you guys is this front line is 1,000 kilometers long, just on the red line, not including the border line up assuming Chernigov. I've seen it. Zhenya has seen it. Rick, you will soon see it. I'm taking you. And if anyone wants to even consider that this is not genocide, And there's something wrong with your ability to process. And what is happening here is much more important morally and for humanity than any of our personal agendas. This is much more important. And I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping. (sighs) Ah. <laughs> oh my. Um hang on a second. King Dog. 
This is one of our mods here. Why do coffees not sing anymore? So they will now. The coffee, the, the next coffee that is purchased will sing. So I have a, a different computer. I don't take this computer when I'm in Ukraine. And the other computer, this computer, it's all screwed up. But it'll sing now. I, I, I'm confident it will sing now for the next coffee. Um, so guys, this is, this is what we're dealing with now, moving on 2024 versus 2023. That is why the numbers are in, um, parenthesis there. These are statistics just released by Ukraine today. I believe through the end of March, 2024, 30,000 directed strikes have taken place. Um, and that is, you know, not like drones on the front flying over. We're talking about directed strikes, whether it's drones or missiles or shelling or artillery, directional strikes. 30,000 have taken place in the first three months of 2024. That is compared to 66,000 that took place in all of 2023. So that puts us on a double pace, basically. So that would put us, if it stays at this rate, 120,000 direct, directed attacks versus 66,000 in 2023. So we take the statistics and we look at it, and this is what Ukraine was saying today. The war is not de-escalating. The war is escalating. Um Sad. Slava Ukraine. And there you have it. It works. <laughs> I told you I had one button hit. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys. Uh saw you on Mercado stream. And your descriptions are heart wrenching, hoof hearted. I wish we could move our politicians the way you move the audience here. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Just want to share the truth, guys. Just want to share the truth. And we rally to do our help. Now, I'm going to show you guys something else. This has been made public. I actually had this video, um, and then Jania gave it to me again, but I already had it. And I didn't want to show it out of respect, but I'm going to show it tonight. I told you guys a couple of nights ago that when Kharkiv was hit with the double tap, and if you're here tonight and you do not know what a double tap is, I will tell you. I have circled there for on the picture for you a fireman. And he's there now just inspecting the damage. And this is a picture from Kharkiv. Um, you can see... Slava the Ukraine! <laughs> there you go. Sloppy! Testing. It's working, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Now, okay. Now, I got one more thing to do. Now the graphic will show. I think we're fixed now. Completely. I think we're fixed now completely. Thank you guys for helping. So... Russia is now double tapping. I don't want to say nonstop because we want to be truthful, but they're double tapping now quite regularly. I think that's the fair way to say it. Over the last three days, they have double tapped Kharkiv, they have double tapped Zaporizhia, and they have double tapped Kramatorsk, three different places. And you, if you're here tonight and you do not know what a double tap is, a double tap is they strike a position, at, for example, that building. They hit it, they wait 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes. Slava Ukraine. And we're working perfectly now. Thank you, King Raccoon, and all you guys for helping us test it and helping me get my studio back in order here in the U.S. Um, once the emergency workers arrive, they then hit it again. And unfortunately, in Kharkiv a couple of nights ago, um, Pete, who will be on here with me live very soon. He's unavailable right now. Um, he has a mechanic in Kharkiv. His name is Vladimir Volva. And he and his father are firemen. His father's 52 years old. Volva's about 30. And they were responding just like the picture you see here to the call 
and Russia double tapped Kharkiv, and Vova Volodymyr's father was killed instantly by an incoming strike. At that moment, uh, even one of our moderators in here, Yana, who is, um, thank you, Danny Carver, for those five coffees. Um, Yana is um, on Team Constantine with Pete in um, admin and media. And she also serves in here with us as a moderator. Just wonderful person from South Africa. Um, we were very concerned because Vladimir and his father had requested body armor. And we were in process of getting the body armor to them. Um, and before we could get the body armor to them, um, Vova's father was killed with the double tap. Now, Pete called me at four in the morning. I was talking to him and he was just devastated. And um, then Yana messaged and says, oh my God, if, I mean, I think I'm basically quoting Yana. Oh my God, why didn't we get the body armor to him? And um, Pete said, please tell Yana, please tell the others. It, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, he was hit with a direct strike. It, it wouldn't have mattered if he would have had on 10 body armors. Um, it was it was unstoppable. So I did pass that message on to the team, and they felt, you know, better. But you don't feel better. But I want to share this with you guys tonight. Um, and I do not try to play with your emotions or anything. I just want you to see the truth. So you're going to see some footage now, and this was media footage, and you're actually going to see Vova, Vladimir, the son. This is Pete's mechanic. This is Pete's mechanic. Thank you, Terrence. Suave. Salve for those two coffees. Um, this is Pete's mechanic on his knees, and you can see him being consoled. Um, this is personal. This is the war in Ukraine. Vova, look at me, look at me. Do you hear me? Vova. Vova. Shh, quiet, quiet. Just hug me. People may ask, why do you show that? My question in response to that would be, why are people not showing that? Is it emotional? Yes. Is it heartbreaking? Yes. Is it truth? Absolutely. Is it being ignored? Quite often. Should this image be in the forefront of the good people of the world? Absolutely. Will images like this change people's opinions that have power to help on levels that are way beyond ours? I hope so. Guys, don't be afraid to share. This is the only way it happens. It's the only way we make a difference. That is the man that literally fixes Pete's vehicles, who saves people's lives on the front lines, who right this minute is saving guys' lives. That's what Pete's doing right now, right this second. Four, uh, one, uh, tw six, one, 12.49 a.m. In, in Ukraine. Pete's saving lives right now. That was his mechanic on the ground there crying who lost his father. We've got to do our part, guys, and we are. Double taps. They wait for the hit to come, and then they hit again. Right now, uh, latest statistics, 500,000 people without power in Kharkiv, and that is a picture of Kharkiv. I want you just to see building after building after building after building, 9, 14, 15, 16, 5, 
stories. Thank you for those five coffees. 5,000 helmets for the snatches. You know that's happening. Slava Ukraine. Um, so thank you guys. Thank you. All of you. I, I'll catch up with the super chats in a minute. All of that. Um, just thank you. I'm in a point now where I get immersed in the content I'm sharing with you. And I, you know, I can't even describe to you how many people are in those buildings and, uh, half a million without power. And it's not going to change guys. It's not going to change right now. This is some of the information that Ukraine is using, specifically uh, military administration, the office of the president, and others. Tonight, we started the update talking about the fortification of the defensive lines properly done now and at far distances properly done. All positive. Office of the president also, there's some talks coming out about NATO, which is not going to happen. We've said that from day one. Of course, it's not going to happen. During the middle of a war, a nation will not be taken into NATO. Come on, be logical, guys. It's not going to happen. And today we had some more information come out on that. But preparing for a late spring summer offensive is what's happening right now. And it's obvious, absolutely obvious. This is why it's good news when Ukraine is going behind the line and taking out refineries and hitting Shahid plants and taking out airplanes and doing everything that they can do. Why? Because right now Ukraine is down 80% of their thermal power plant producing capability. Take a look at this graphic here, and I will try to explain it to you a little bit. Uh, Kharkiv, they've lost 33%. Zmiv, 90%. Lugansk, irrelevant. Uh, Slavyansk, 50%. Ugladar, it's 85%. Um, Zaporizhia, 30%. This entire nation is running on 20% of capacity for the thermal power plants, and they have lost 6 gigawatts of power production. They're now having to import power and um, this is all a precursor this is a precursor hopefully it is averted but it's a precursor and it's just going to continue now if you look at this map right here you see you may not recognize that map because I've kind of zoomed into it a little bit so let me help Get you oriented. Look at the bottom right. You see a blue circle. That is the city of Kherson. Look at the bottom center. And that is the city of Odessa. This is Ukraine on the right. Blue line is the border between Ukraine and Moldova. The red shading is Transnistria region. Basically, Russia. Russian military is there. The largest munitions dump depot in Europe is in the Transnester. And today, a radar station was hit by a drone inside Transnester. Now, I have been trying to confirm, and Rick, if you're in here, or Zhenya, anybody that's inside Ukraine, if you can confirm it for me, I do not. So I only want to share what we can confirm. All I can tell you is a radar station was hit in the Transnester 100%. I'm going to show you the video, but I didn't see it if it was actually Ukraine doing it or false flag. I do not know the answer to that. So hopefully maybe Zhenya's in here or um, Rick's in here and they know more, but I will show you it being done and ultimately whether it's um, Ukraine or partisan or false flag Transnester or it's Moldova doing it. I don't know. I'm just telling you it happened. My guess is Ukraine did it, but I, I don't want to guess um, that 
this is this one's not a fake. This one's legit here, uh, Jr. Uh, but I, I don't have enough info to know who did it. Um, right here. Drone shot. Listen to it. You hear the drone. You'll see it again. There it is, right in the middle of the screen. Now it's going to dive on target. Um, that is what it is. I'll keep a peek out if you guys see Jenya or Rick buzzing me, but the bottom line is that's what happened. Now, what I'm not in here saying, uh, who did it? I'm just telling you it did happen. That is in Rubutnitsia. That is in the Transnester. That is six kilometers inside the border. Um, so we shall see, um, if anything comes from that or not, but it's happening and at this point, we need to pay at least pay attention to it. Now, Kharkiv may become... Who is this guy first? This is Andre Yermak. So if you are in here tonight and you do not know who Andre Yermak is, I will tell you. Andre Yermak is the head of Zelensky's office. Like, he's the chief of staff. That's the way we would refer to it here in the United States. He's the boss of the office of the president. Now... I know that many times you see President Zelensky walking around and you see this big man with him because Zelensky is a little guy. In fact, if you want to know the size of Zelensky, he and I would see uh, he and I would see eye to eye. We about the same size. Um, OK, so there we go. Rick, the Ukrainian, we won't admit it, but I'm 99 percent sure it's us. Transnester will be demilitarized. So there you go, guys. I hope that actually is a demonstration that we're not here for hype. We're not here to make crap up. We're here to try to tell you the truth. I didn't know who hit it. I know it was hit there. I got geotag on that 100%. It's in Transnester. And it was a real hit, but I didn't know who did it. So there's Rick helping us out with that. Uh, and see, there's Jenya too. Not enough info yet. So there you go. We're trying to tell you guys the truth, and I think that's why... 380, 392 of you in here right now, and many will be watching later. Thank you for trusting us to tell you the truth. Um, now, this is Andre Yermak, the chief of staff, the head of the office of the president. He's the big dude, always walking around with, with um, President Zelensky. You see Zelensky, and then you see this big dude behind him. It's Yermak. Um, this is his statement. Kharkiv may become the next target of the Russians during a major offensive which will probably take place in June, directly coming from the head of the Office of President Andrei Yermak in an interview with Politico. He emphasized that the aid from the U.S. in the amount of $61 billion should be approved as soon as possible because Ukraine is at a critical moment. And maybe tonight I should have renamed the stream um, uh, Critical Moment for Ukraine. It might have even been a better title. Uh, this is why I always say, guys, just be patient. Be patient. If you know, and this is why I also deeply appreciate our team. You know, whether it's Jenya, who's my partner, or it's Rick, Johnny, Gertis, Andrew. Keep going, James, and why Ukraine? I love that dude. He he's he's legit. Um, and, and all the others, even Dicky Dawson, the Shills, everybody. I like. Go watch all those guys. They tell the truth. Don't watch others that don't tell the truth. But it was just three or four days ago that people were saying, out of Ukraine, out of the military, 
<clears throat> stop talking about Kharkiv. Kharkiv is not going to be a target. There's no way they can come against Kharkiv. There's no way that Russia can take Kharkiv. There's no way that none of that can happen. Guys, let me tell you something. If we do not get F-16s in air defense, they can take Kharkiv. You're hearing it right here. Zhenya and I spend so much time in Kharkiv, we know Kharkiv like the back of our hand. All of it. Every bit of Kharkiv we know. And I'm telling you, there's a deep forest, there's the Russian border, and if they want to come, they can come. They Now, they do not have the buildup to come. But if we do not stop the glide bombs and we do not get air defense, this is why just three or four days later, there's Yermak, and we listen to him. He says, Kharkiv will be a target if aid does not come. I completely agree with that man 1 million percent because it's logical, it's simple, it's an easy uh, proximity, and it's a massive city. Massive. So we just wait and see, but that is Andre Yermak. Today, I was getting the news where I'm sure you guys already know, know this, um, NATO... Of course, it's not going to happen for Ukraine during the war. Be logical. But will it happen after? Maybe. Maybe. Right now, they're talking about, and even Zelensky put out some stuff today, and other news organizations were putting out that maybe there could be an agreement. And it was Stoltenberg. Stoltenberg as well, because I was reading it all earlier today, that says, yes, maybe we can get Ukraine into NATO quicker if they will give up some territory. <laughs> Google it yourself. It's out there. Um, but that's not going to happen. Ukraine's not giving up their territory. They're fighting for their for their land and their culture and their life and their nation. Um, but it's coming out today that the it's the United States and Germany that will say no and are saying no to NATO accession for Ukraine. Um, but that's that's not a surprise, guys. They're, uh, <laughs> we tell you the truth here: Ukraine will not be in NATO while there's a war going on with Russia. Period. Be careful. Um, whoever this dude is, Alex, he's got a huge following. Ukraine will become a member of NATO, Blinken. Um, and I'm not talking about that. So will become, that's future. So Blinken, no problem to say that. That's not what I'm, that's not what, uh, that's Blinken and um, Dmitry Kaleba, the foreign minister of Ukraine, standing there side by side. No problem. It's okay. Yes, Ukraine will become a member of NATO. Agree completely. It's not going to happen while they're at war with Russia, but it will happen. So my point being, this dude, ALX, whoever he has, has like f half a million, 600,000 followers. He makes that statement, but then Elon Musk replies and retweets it. And this is what Elon Musk said. I put his response in the bottom right and the little guy with the phone up there. Everybody's reading this. Elon Musk replied to him, says, yep, this is literally how the nuclear apocalypse movie starts and places a link with it. You say, okay, well, why is that important? It's important because Elon Musk has so many followers and there are so many people that live off of every word that man breathes. They don't even think for themselves. If Elon said it, it's gospel. Elon is like Jesus or Gandhi. Elon is like the prophet of the ages. And if he says it, it has to be true. He's a genius. He invented PayPal and Tesla. He's a genius. Be careful, guys. Be careful. As I always say, make sure your sources are from pure water. And us and all of our partners here on YouTube are trying to provide pure, clean waters for you. But these guys are very, very influential. Uh, last couple of things, and we'll get out of here. But I do have some videos for you that are going to make you smile. Um Right now, Ukraine seriously watching internally. I actually got this map, of course, from Ukrainian news, and I just I just clipped it really quick because you can see it there, um, not in English, and it's saying that we are expecting, and this is what Ukraine's perspective was: we expect a an an imminent attack, large attack from Iran, wherever it comes from, on the nation of Israel. Israel has been emptying their embassies. Israel has been preparing for everything. It's a frantic mode right now in Israel, to be quite honest. An imminent attack projected to come from Iran. This is what Ukraine was talking about over the next five days. But the commentary that went with it was this. If that happens, how much more will we be forgotten? 
if there's some massive escalation in the Middle East, what happens to us? Please do not forget us. Well, I promise Ukraine, we and all of our team team members here, we will, and this community and all of you people, we will not forget and we will do our best. So once again, we wait and we see. Now, there's my little buddy, the legend. Um, I showed you guys him oh, a few weeks ago in Ukraine. We gave him some chocolates and some gifts, and he has nothing to do with the videos other than he's smiling, and I want to end with a smile. That's my little buddy there, and he, he has the hearing problem, and he has that implant. And you guys were wanting to – many of you were asking, can he hear at all? Does he have any kind of implant? He does. And they're in process of maybe taking it to the next level. But, yes, he has a thing right here going into his ear and his head. And um, he's got a wonderful mother who's a hero, a literal hero of Ukraine, like G.I. Jane, guys, is his mother. Very good friends that we work hand-in-hand with. And, um, yeah, that'll give you a smile. That'll give you a smile. Uh, <laughs> stop calling him Elon. His name is Elmo. Okay, I'm, I'm good with Elmo. All right, so here we go, guys. Um, first, I'm going to give you video here tonight that you have never, it is not possible to see anywhere else in the world. Now, this is my new friend that I met, and he will say it himself so I can tell you. We met in Konstantinivka at a gas station, and we are going to start partnering with him. He is a soldier. He is a chaplain. He fights on the zero line. And his English is amazing. He's a great guy. And um, tonight he sent me some videos and I said, you know, can I share them? He goes, of course you can share them. And um, there is English is great. Now, for all of you that are international, I, I'm an American. So he's speaking to me about America. But I'm telling you right now, he doesn't know about all of you yet, but he will. Um, I'm pretty sure also he said he would come on live with me at some time, which would be awesome. But you're going to see he's talking about, you know, thank you, America. Thank you, America. But, guys, he doesn't know about all of you. So thank you, everybody, he would be saying if he did. So here it is, video. I promise you there's nowhere else you're going to see this. Uh, Look, Greg, uh, what vehicle my good fellow from United States is it now on his vacation because uh, he's uh, in foreign legion and he has, uh, has an opportunity to take a vacation. He leave me that car <laughs> yeah, to just hide away from uh, some people that can stole it or something like that. But uh, my Honda CRV is totally broken. <laughs> so I take the uh, Ram and oh, God bless America. Uh, but, but. Now, are you guys ready to see his face? Sure. And with full permissions, here you go, guys. But if we talk more widely about the needs, uh, the needs of our army, uh, it uh, will be a question of uh, cars, because uh, we need more vehicles, especially pickups. Not such a big beast like uh, I said in the video before. Uh, it's, it, it's exception, but uh, uh, good working pickups it uh, always necessary here, especially an assault brigade like mine. So if you guys have some opportunities, it uh, definitely be good to send some help. I think, and uh, I even just wasn't asking, I uh, propose uh, to do something with it, uh, if uh, you guys have a such vision, so, <laughs> and uh, God bless you all, of American people that support Ukraine, American uh, health is very important for us, uh, especially in weapon and uh, every kind of support because we are fighting for survival now uh, you was in chassis VR and you see what is happening wow isn't that good stuff um 
Isn't it nice to see? Uh, yeah. God bless America. And if he had knew that all of you would be watching this, he would have said, God bless you, world. Uh, thank you. And uh, you did hear him say where we were and uh, right over there next to Chasi Vyar. So um, it's a real hero there, guys. And just the humility. Um, I, I'm not I'm just proposing. I'm not proposing. I'm just saying, hey, guys, we need help with vehicles. And that's what we're working on. And um, we will continue. Um, we will continue. Once we finish the Snatch Project. Now, I'm going to show you one more video. And guys, this is the biggest smile yet. There is a young boy on the front lines in Ukraine that every day, every day, comes out and he waves the Ukrainian flag. And every day, the helicopters of the Ukrainian military are flying over his head and flying over his house. And the jets are flying over and artillery's going. And he's still there with his family. And every day, he goes out on the back of the field and he waves his Ukrainian flag. Well, <laughs> this is unbelievable. They stopped. In the middle of a war. And Jenny and I have been there so many times and we see these helicopters flying so low. It's awesome. They stopped. One kept rotating so they could give security, of course, and the other one stopped. And the Ukrainian soldiers fighting a war jumped out, gave him presents and chocolates and thank yous and another flag and all this stuff. Guys, you cannot ever convince me of how good Ukrainian people are. Here you go. This is a smile for your Friday night. Watch this last moment here. I pull the music back. That's the kid standing there. And my favorite part's coming. The wave. I was reading all of your guys' comments while um, that was playing. And uh, whew, incredible. That's an incredible way to end our Friday evening together. Um, amazing. And yes, lots of folks are cutting onions right now. Um, thank you guys for all of the coffees tonight. Thank you for the gifted memberships. Uh, John Larkin, Papa Dutch, I bag Danny Carver. Um, uh, Papa, a river begins at the corner of my eye and I cannot stop it. Down it runs across my face until it drips from my beard, but I will do what I can even from far away. Papa Dutch, thank you, sir. Ohms, gifted one membership. Stop the carnage. Slava Ukraini. Papa Dutch, the future is ours to make. I bag five memberships. Papa Dutch, how do you want people remembered? 
uh, Dunk on You five gifted memberships. Uh, Cipher, I donated on the website. I hope it went to the Snatch Fund. It all goes to the Snatch Fund, guys. Everything goes to the Snatch Fund, and you will get an update on those numbers. In fact, it looks like we may have a significant jump come in a few days. We're getting very close, very close. 260 is in the target. Um, Papa Dutch wants to know how to develop a detection destruction system that can identify okay. and destroy glide bombs. Yes, agreed. Adrian with the 20 coffees. Thank you there. No, Papa Dutch, you didn't forget anything, and it's going to the snatches. Thank you, Richard. Thank you for that. You guys are awesome. Getting ready to buy tickets. Yes, the Hope Train. Station. Thank all of you for being here. Thank you for all that you do. Guys, over this weekend, it's Friday night. I've been gone for three months on the Ukrainian front lines. And tonight, I'm going on a date with my mother. <laughs> my wife just came to the door of the studio here and she goes, Greg, your mother's in the car waiting for you. Now, listen, I'm not a freak, but my mother loves me. While I was in Ukraine, my brother, who is 48 years old, was having open heart surgery. And my mother is in the middle with one son having open heart surgery and the other on the front line dodging bombs. And she's here in the United States and Pennsylvania going, oh, my gosh, I hope I make it. So I promised my mother that when I get home, I would take her out. And, yes, I'm leaving my wife at home, leaving my father at home, everybody, my kids. I'm taking my mother on a date. And I I encourage all of you to do the same. Value your friends, value your family while you still have time, and be, you be blessed. Tomorrow I'll be uploading a video that uh, Professor Curtis and I made. Additionally, tomorrow night I'll be live on the Shills with Starsky and that whole crew. Sunday I will be on with Rick, and we will be raffling our first flag, learning how to do that. And then Monday, 5 o'clock Eastern, I'll be back with you unless something goes sideways be ready at any time. Thank you for sharing. Gumby, thank you for that 20. Thank you for doing all that you guys do. Please, we're so close to 10,000 subscribers. I can't even believe it. It's shocking. That, that is just so much growth, and it's just going to continue until victory. Do peramoga, until victory. Thank you guys for helping us to tell the truth. Hope we do it in a fair, concise, honest way. And um, at the end of the day, you have a smile. You guys be blessed on your Friday night, your Saturday morning, Friday morning, wherever you're at in this world. And we will see you very, very soon. Good night. Slava Ukraine. Yeah!